Welcome to Generation Church Online. We are so happy that you joined us for church this morning. We are excited for what God is doing here in our community. If you would like to give and be a part of what God is doing, you can do so by visiting our website and clicking the giving tab, which is safe and secure. Thank you for your generosity. After the message, please visit our website and click the Church Online tab. There you will find our sermons and materials that correlate with each message, as well as Next Gen Kids activities. Be sure to share this worship experience with friends and family. And don't forget to tag us at GC underscore reach. All right, church, let's prepare our hearts today and be expectant for a powerful message from God's word.
And welcome to Generation Church. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to be with us, to worship with us, and to lean into God's Word. I'm so excited to preach the message to you, but as we say every single week, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell notification to be updated every single time we release new content. We stream every Sunday at 10 a.m. Our online worship experience is not going anywhere. We will be here every single Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, so make sure that you click that bell notification to be updated. Also follow us on social media at GC underscore reach is the best way to follow us. Check us out on Facebook as well. Uh, we are posting updates and encouraging words and recaps to the sermon the previous week. We're constantly posting content. So please be sure to follow us. Also, I want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you that give to the ministry of Generation Church. Uh, I can't tell you how much your, your giving is making an impact in our community. I'm telling you right now, uh, what we've experienced over the past year uh, during the pandemic and as we continue to kind of move into a more physical gathering setting, uh, your generosity has impacted the community and helped so many people. We were, we were able to partner with so many different organizations here in town and continue to. Uh, we're able to get this message out to wherever you are because of your generosity. We're able to, to gather physically in a location uh, at the house because of your generosity. It's truly making a difference. And, you know, the Lord tells us that he loves a cheerful giver. So we're thankful that you bring the tithe to the storehouse because it is making a difference. So thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, and if you want to take that step today to give to the ministry, you can do so online by clicking the giving tab. Go to gcreach.org and click the giving tab to give today. Thank you so much. Be blessed as you give. We're also going to continue to announce May 2nd is first Sunday. Mark your calendars. May 2nd is first Sunday. I'm so excited. I can't wait to gather physically. Like I'm pumped to gather physically, to be together, uh, to worship together, to be in the same room together so that I'm not in a room with a bunch of cameras. <laughs> I'm so excited for May 2nd. So mark your calendars, invite your friends. It'll be an awesome time to invite people to church, to invite them out to be a part of the worship experience. Uh, we're so excited. Our next gen kids will be operating in full force. Uh, that has been something that I've, I, I've been really, really wanting to bring my kids to church and, and have them play with other kids and be a part of the, the kids ministry. So our next gen kids will be uh, operating. They'll be going strong. Bring your kids. It's time for the whole family to come to church and be a part of it. May 2nd. And even, even if you aren't able to make it May 2nd, our next kids will continue their series that they are on right now. I know this week they are going to be teaching your kids on loving people, how to love people. What does that look like? And so they have an incredible story that you can do with your little world changers if you're going to be at home. And even if you do come to First Sunday, why don't you just download the material and file it away and have it and do it on Wednesday with your kids. Uh, our Next Gen Kids uh, team is incredible. They continue to put awesome content together for your world changers. So check that out online as as well. Uh, you can also text you belong, one word, you belong to 94000. That's 94000, and you will be put on our list of uh, uh, text list and email list to be uh, in the know with what, what's happening here at Generation Church. But May 2nd, mark your calendars, May 2nd, that's next Sunday. Yes, if you didn't know, that's next Sunday.
Sunday. We're going to be gathering physically at 250 Main Street, First Church here in Old Weathersfield. You're going to want to be with us 3.30 p.m. It's going to be an awesome time. And I'm so excited that we get to partner with First Church. Uh, we love First Church, and we're so excited that we get to partner with them, and they are going to allow us to use their facility. What a blessing that is. We're so grateful for them and everything that they're allowing us to do when we come in and use their facility. So that's going to be awesome. Next week, I will see you there at First Sunday. So excited for it. But today... I'm going to be preaching out of John 21. Um, and, you know, last week I preached a message uh, titled, Don't Doubt the Strength of the Net. And so a lot of us fall into doubt, especially this past year. We've fallen into doubt and, uh, and insecurity. And what God wants to show you is that when you cast your net out to reach people, when you are, are fulfilling the great commission that is put on your life to go into all the world and, and preach the gospel and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you have a strong net with you. A net that will never break, but will always be with you everywhere that you go. So check out that message if you missed it last week. But today, I'm going to be preaching out of John chapter 21. I'll give you the title right up front. We'll pray, and then we'll dive deeper into God's Word. The title of this message is, When New is Next Door. When New is Next Door. When New is Next Door. Let's pray and dive deeper into God's Word. Father, I thank you so much for every single person under the sound of my voice, Father, that they are, that they want to learn more about you, that they want to understand more about who you are in their lives. So Father, I ask right now that as my words go forth, Lord, that you speak to your people. Lord, I'm just an empty vessel to be used by you. So Father, I pray right now that you speak to your people's situation, their circumstance, that you give them hope, that you encourage them, that you inspire them, that you lift them up. And whatever they're struggling with, Lord, I pray right now that you come into their situation and you help them. You give them the peace that they need, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we love you and honor you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So here we are back at John 21. John chapter 21. I know I've been preaching about John 21 over the past couple of weeks, and uh, a few weeks ago I preached John 21 with Luke chapter 5, and we saw the, the parallel there, uh, but I can't get away from John 21. It's like a new car buying experience, I, and I'm sure if you've bought a new car, you've experienced this as well, but when my wife and I were looking at new cars to purchase, uh, her old car, well, the car that she had when she was 16, which I inherited when we got married. Married and I drove it and I love that car. Max was its name. It was a 1993 or 92 uh, Nissan Maxima. And so she named it Max. And so I drove Max into the ground and Max treated us well. I mean, it lasted a, over 300,000 miles. And so Max treated us well. Uh, long live Max. But uh, we, uh, we knew that we needed to uh, buy a new car. And so we were also looking at a Nissan Ultima. Same, you know, same uh, company, same make, but we were looking at a new model. And so we looked at the uh, Nissan Ultima and it was a 2019, very good shape, uh, pretty, pretty new. And this was a couple of years ago. And every time that we went and looked at the car, because you don't go to a car dealership the first time and buy the car. Uh, so, but every time we went back to look at the car when we would leave i'd see nissan ultimas all over the place it's like it's like all as if like everybody just went out and bought a nissan ultima and you you can you can relate if you've experienced this the new car buying experience um you just start seeing the car all over the place you never realized that the car has been right there the whole time and the same thing with our toyota sienna Yes, we have a minivan. Uh, three children require a minivan. That's, that's how I feel. But we have a Toyota Sienna and all of a sudden I just saw all these minivans all over the place. And it just, it, it's as if people just were like, okay, Kevin Bree are going to buy a minivan. Let's all go buy a minivan. This is how I feel about John 21. I can't get away from it. I just feel like God continues to speak to me about John chapter 21 and what Jesus is doing with the disciples. Cause I believe that it apply to your life today. But what happens in those moments of us well, purchasing the new car and then seeing it all over the place. It's not as if the volume of the car increased. It's not like people started buying Ultimas or buying uh, Siennas because we're buying a Sienna. The volume never changed. Our awareness of its relevance did. 
I'm gonna say that again. It's not like the volume of the car changed. People just didn't go out and start buying uh, Toyota Siennas. It's our awareness of its relevance that changed. It was more relevant to us because we were more aware of the vehicle. You know, this is how we ought to look at scripture is that we need to be more understanding that this Bible, the word of God is relevant to our lives. That if we increase our awareness of its relevance, then it applies to our lives. You know, Hebrews 13, eight says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Deuteronomy 4, two says, do not add or subtract from what I have commanded to you. We, we, don't, we don't change the Bible. The volume or the books of the Bible don't change. It's not like a new one gets added every week. The Bible has not changed, but yet it is still the highest purchased book in our world today. The volume has not changed, but I wonder if God wants to speak to you today and he wants to tell you that the awareness of its relevance needs to be more prevalent in your life. The Bible is relevant. It is very, very relevant. But are you aware of its relevance today? And so I implore you to look at your circumstance today and go to the Bible, go to God's word for the answer. We're all seeking answers. 2020, all we could look for were answers. Why is this happening? What's happening? Why is this happening? What, what comes next? We're always looking for answers. And if we turn to the scriptures, if we turn to what God says about you, then he will give you purpose in what you're experiencing. And one thing is true in life today. I can, I can say from personal experience and many others in my life can attest to this. But there is purpose in pain. There is purpose in pain. We may not experience it in the moment. We may not uh, in that exact uh, second of experiencing that pain. We may not understand why it's happening to us. But I can tell you right now that there is purpose in pain. And so John 21, we're going to start reading in verse 3. John 21 verse 3. The Bible says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. The disciples said that. So they went out and got in the boat. But that night they caught nothing. The disciples caught nothing. And so a little bit of context here. The disciples are out on the boat. They're fishing. And Jesus had already died. He had already rose again. And he started appearing to the disciples throughout this scripture. And so uh, this is this is post-resurrection. And the disciples are like, kind of like, well, well, what do we do? We followed this guy for three years and we saw incredible things. But what do we do now? Like what, what, what comes next? So Peter's like, I'm going to go fishing and the disciples follow them. But that night they caught nothing. Man, does that sound familiar? How many people feel like last year they caught nothing? <laughs> like, like this past year has been like nothing. Like it's amazing how much so many things can happen in such a short period of time. But when we reflect on like what we accomplished, we were like, what the heck did we accomplish last year? We, we did nothing. Maybe you feel empty today. Like 2020 was such a chaotic and crazy year. But as you're reflecting on it, you're, uh, you're four months into 2021 and you're, you're, you're like, okay, you know, what, what, what comes next? Uh, you, you actually sometimes want to forget 2020 and it feels like so much happened. But then you look back and you're like, what the heck? We didn't do anything last year. And I want you to write this down this morning. Jesus turns nothing into something. Jesus turns nothing into something. What you see as nothing, Jesus sees as something. <laughs> I, 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 need, I need you guys to get this today. That what Jesus sees as something, a lot of times we interpret as nothing. That this is nothing. And I've seen this so much in my life personally. Man, I, I wish that you guys could have seen the first time that I preached the message. <laughs> whoo, whoo, whoo. Oh boy, it was a joke. No, I, fe I felt like that. that. That's how I felt. I felt like it was a complete joke. I ended 15 minutes early. Like the pastor that allowed me to speak was like, 
are you done? Like, you, like, do I come up now? Like, you're done. You're really finished with, with the sermon. That was like, boom, real quick. I was done early. I felt sick to my stomach the whole time. I was so nervous. And, uh, and, and I sit back and I'm like, wow, God, that was terrible. Um, is anything even, did anybody even understand what I said? Is anybody going to even get anything out of it? But I specifically remember being in the back of the room and and this uh, young, young kid came up to me at the time he was around my age. And he said, hey, man, I really appreciate the word that you gave today. It really impacted me. And I needed it uh, because I didn't I didn't know if I was going to continue to move on or if I was going to throw in the towel. I just I felt like God was done with me. I didn't really know what my next step was, but you really helped me see that there's purpose in my life. And in that moment, I felt like just breaking down and crying, but I, I couldn't cry in front of him. Like what? I just preached the message. I got <clears> to <throat> I got to stay strong. I can't cry in front of him. But uh, I remember sitting back in that time and I'm like, wow, God, you really did something with what I thought was nothing. And this is the disciples are feeling this right now. <laughs> the Bible says, but they caught nothing, nothing all night. But I want you to turn to your neighbor today and tell him early in the morning. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, early in the morning. Verse four, this is what it says. Early in the morning. Oh man, that'll preach an entire message in itself. Early in the morning. So the disciples were out on the boat all night. It says, the Bible says that they didn't catch anything all night, but early in in the morning. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23 says this, the steadfast love of the, of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. I want to encourage you today that our God is a faithful God and that if you're struggling to get through the night, there's a morning where God wants to come into your situation, where he wants to be there to to support you, to love you, to care for you. Do not quit at night. Do not give up at night because early in the morning, he will show up. Verse four, it says early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. They were pretty upset. They didn't catch anything. And he said, you know what? Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. Now, now imagine this again, the disciples on the boat and they're saying, well, well, you know, we just fished all night and now it's morning time. We haven't caught anything. And now some guy, because they don't realize who he is at this point in time, is telling us to just throw our, our nets on the other side. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. You know, this is what Jesus didn't say. He didn't say, hey, I'll wait for high tide to come. And then I need you to to move your boat half a mile north so that the the, the clarity of the water will be better. And then you will catch some fish. He didn't didn't give them a, 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 a six step plan on how to catch more fish. He just said, yo, just put your net on the other side. Just move six feet over. Some of us have been moving six feet for 13 months. I can't, I can't. They move from one side of the boat. They move six feet over to the other side of the boat. Uh, we, we've been moving around six feet apart from each other for too long already. But I'm sure that the, the disciples had some hesitation here as, as Jesus tells them to just move their net six feet over. That's it. Just move to this other side of the boat. I'm sure they were saying to themselves, is he serious right now? Like, is this dude real? Like, like he's just asking us to move over. This just doesn't make sense to me right now. And I I could imagine that Peter sitting there looking at John and he's like, yo, like I'm, I'm done. The, The Bible says another translation says that Peter was fishing naked. I'm not sure why he was fishing naked. That's a bit too much for me, but, uh, it it was probably hot and (laughs) in, in the boat. And he was probably like, I'm done. I don't want to do this right now. I don't understand what he's telling me to do. They're probably sitting there like this doesn't make any sense. Write this down this morning. What doesn't make sense in the natural God is perfecting in the spiritual. What doesn't make sense in the natural, God is perfecting in 
the spiritual. This story is not about catching fish. (laughs) I want you to get that. This story is not about catching fish. It's not about catching grouper. It's about Jesus's greatness. It's not about catching snapper. It's a way of revitalizing the disciples' spirit. It's not a passage about catching some trout. It's about showing that the King of Kings is triumphant. That's what this passage of Scripture is about. What seems to not make sense in the natural. You're telling me that I'm going to catch fish if I just move over here. If I just change it up. What's that going to do? What seems to not make sense in the natural, God is perfecting in the spiritual. It did not make sense for them to move their nets. And I think what God is speaking to us today is that we need to stop asking why and start asking how. Not why did that happen last year? Why did this happen? Why why am I not able to draw closer to you, God? Stop asking why and start asking how. How are you going to use me? How are you going to to put me on a path of purpose? How is this going to work out? How is 2021 going to be the best year yet? Because I can tell you right now what the enemy meant to take you out with, God is turning for good. He is turning that thing around. If the disciple sat on that boat and says, this joker is nuts, I'm not going to put my net on the other side, they would have been fishing and they probably would have starved because they probably wouldn't have caught no fish. (laughs) But when they listened to their creator, when they listened to the one that had been with them, when they listened to it, when they listened to his word and moved the net to the other side, they caught a ton of fish. I want to keep reading in verse 7 as we close today. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed on the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals where, there with fish on it and some bread. I love that because Jesus had breakfast ready for them. He had it all set up, all ready for them. He didn't really even need their fish. He just wanted to show them his faithfulness. Let me, let me say that again. Jesus doesn't need our fish. He wants our faithfulness. He wants us to show him that we're going to be faithful, that we're going to believe in who he is and what he has for us. Verse 10 Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Verse 12, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Come on, come and have breakfast with me. Come sit down. Peter, I know you denied me three times, uh, but come and sit with me. Uh, Thomas, I know you're, you're, you're known as uh, uh, someone who doubts, but it's fine. Come and sit next to me. Let's have some breakfast. See, breakfast was a common thing among the disciples in Jesus. For three years, actually. For three years, the disciples traveled with Jesus and had breakfast every morning. Every morning, they'd wake up and they'd have breakfast and they'd sit and they'd experience a beautiful sunrise in their venti caramel macchiatos, sipping their their coffee every morning they'd sit for what this was a common thing amongst the disciples for three years they shared this precious time with jesus so what makes this time so different what makes this time so unique this time where they're sitting down having breakfast together he conquered death which reinforced his divinity In this time, this moment that we see, Jesus had already conquered death, hell, and the grave. And it just reinforced his divinity and who he was. Jesus was the same. He was the same. But what was sitting next to the disciples was a different perspective of their purpose. Oh, that's good. You better write that down. See, Jesus was the same, but sitting next to the disciples 
was a renewed perspective of their purpose. Jesus wanted something new in their lives. This was a perfect picture of Jesus showing them, I know that we've traveled for the past three years. I know what you've seen. I know, I understand that this is crazy. I get it, this whole thing. But what I want you to understand is that even now, I am still with you. And here's your mandate. You are gonna be fishers of men. You are gonna be the ones that go out and catch the people for my name's sake. Their purpose had been renewed. They've had a new purpose. They were excited about this. They sat down and what was common for them to have breakfast with Jesus, this was all brand new. This was a brand new exposure for them. Peter realized when John said to him, this, this, that's the Lord. Peter realized that and he sprinted to him. He swam as fast as he could. He had a renewed perspective of his purpose. You know, Jesus wants to do something new in your life. He wants to do something new in your life. And a lot of times we equate new to just uprooting everything and restarting. That's it. We're just going to uproot everything and we're just going to restart. 2020, let's press the restart button January 1st, 2021. That's what we want to do. We want to forget it all. We want to say bye-bye. We don't ever want to think about it again. We want to write it off. We want to cancel 2020. So many of us. That's what we want to do. But I wonder if Jesus wants to do something new in your life, but he doesn't want you to cancel what has been done. He doesn't want you to, to forget how good he was to you in 2020. And instead of trying to just uproot everything and change districts, I think Jesus is telling us that we need to look next door. You know, the title of this message today is when new is next door when new is right next door let's not go into this year and, and continue to push through and be excited about 2021 and and forget his faithfulness in 2020 let's go in let's continue to push through this year and continue to remember how faithful god has been to us that he is not calling us to just uproot and move districts he's just saying hey look next door <laughs> There's a neighbor that needs my grace, that needs my love, that needs what I have for them. Go share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Have a conversation with them. We are called to go into all the world and reach people for Jesus. Let's never lose, lose that zeal. Let's never forget what we are called to do. Because what's new may be right next door. God is doing a new thing in the body of Christ. I believe it with all my heart that what we thought was how things should have been done or how they were being done, they may never go back to that again. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Because God is doing a new thing in the body of Christ. And I'm more excited now more than ever for this future. I'm so excited for what God has. And so today, if you're sitting here and you're listening to this message and you're saying, you know what? I need God to do a new thing in my life. I've struggled over the past and I don't know what my future looks like. Let me encourage you with 2 Corinthians 5:17. It says, for any man or person found in Christ, anybody, any person found in Christ, they are a new creation. They are made new. The old is past and all things are made new. When you receive Jesus, when you receive him as your Lord and personal savior, then you are made new. What does that mean? I, I get to be like a completely deep, different person? No, 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 <laughs> no. It's a heart transformation. What happens on the inside of you changes. You start seeing your life with purpose, with a renewed vision, with excitement, with something to look forward to. When you receive Jesus, you're made new. And so today, if you're on the other side of this screen and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, it's very simple to just say this prayer. You could start off your journey of following Jesus by saying this simple prayer. And this will 
catapult you, this will kickstart you. And all it is is just a recognition that you're surrendering your life to God. If that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I receive your son Jesus. I believe that he rose from the grave and he is seated in heaven. I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. Father, make me new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, that's exciting news. If you prayed that prayer today, I want to know about it. Our team wants to know it. We all want to know about it. If you could just type it in the chat right now, I received Jesus. We'd love to get in contact with you. Or if you send an email to amen at gcreach.org, we'll send you some materials. We'll send you a Bible. And we just want to connect with you. We want to be in community with you because life is done better together. And for those of you that tune in every single week, we thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be in a part of this worship experience. If you can make it out to First Sunday next week, I will see you there. I cannot wait for First Sunday. Sunday. It's going to be exciting uh, because we truly believe that God is doing something new. But hey, this week, get out into your community. Talk to your neighbor. Have a conversation with them about Jesus. It's very simple. Just talk. Just have a conversation. You never know what God might do because new may be right next door. Hey, I hope you have a blessed week. We love you so much. If you need anything, let us know. We're here to serve you. And always remember, you belong. Thank you for watching Church Online this morning. Be sure to follow our social media accounts to stay updated with all that is going on at Generation Church. Have a blessed week.